Hello and welcome to the fifth part in the concurrent teaching video series. In this section, we'll discuss key strategies for during the lesson to manage students and instruction with in-person and virtual students. One of the biggest pieces to managing concurrent teaching is ensuring visibility of instructional materials for in-person and distance learning students. This means that during the lesson, you may need to adjust your settings to do so. If there's a change in the learning location, you may need to shift the webcam to face the focal point of attention. That could be you, the whiteboard, a demonstration, or other visuals. Anytime you change between cameras or change locations, it's best to ask your in-person Zoom monitor or your Zoom students just to make sure the visuals are clear. As students ask questions or give input, the teacher will want to repeat their questions or comments so the students on Zoom are able to hear the idea and follow along with the conversation. Throughout the lesson, you'll want to periodically check in with the students assigned to monitor Zoom to address any questions, contributions, or technical issues your digital learning students may have. When asking questions, alternate between in-person students and remote students when soliciting input. This will help engage and involve all students in the learning process. As we continue the year and moving forward, you want to keep using the Core 4 and other extremely powerful learning tools like Nearpod and GoFormative to engage all students in the lesson and get continuous evidence of student thinking. With the Core 4, you will still push out all your assignments via Google Classroom and continue to use the G Suite to have students create and collaborate. Tools like Docs, Slides, and Jamboard will allow students to collaborate whether they're in person or virtual. You'll also want to leverage the power of Screencastify to create quick instructional videos for asynchronous time, differentiated instruction, or content in a station instructional model. Zoom is going to continue to be key. We recommend that you use your desktop computer as the primary Zoom host because it has many more features and capabilities than Chromebooks in Zoom. Also, make sure your Zoom stays up to date so you have the latest features available. Other tools like Nearpod and GoFormative will be especially helpful in concurrent teaching. For example, when using a live teacher-led Nearpod, all students are able to see and interact with the lesson visuals and respond to activities all in one place. When planning lessons, try to maximize the effectiveness of your synchronous time and focus on the application of skills, discussions, and other activities that cannot easily be done via video or an asynchronous work time. Using a blended learning or flipped learning approach will be especially beneficial while we have reduced student contact time. The professional development offering Advancing with Blended and Online Learning with Catlin Tucker will be especially helpful for you if you're interested in learning more about this topic. Keep an eye out for this and other PD opportunities via the weekly digital learning update emails. If you would like more information on the use of any of the tools mentioned, or if you would like help preparing lessons for concurrent teaching, contact our tech integration specialist, Aaron Tommen, by emailing questions, visiting the digital learning office hours, or scheduling team or one-on-one -on -one appointments. You can also view our concurrent teaching resource document at tinyurl.com forward slash concurrent resource doc.